An expert of the law, lawyer, says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus responded, you know the scriptures. What does the scriptures say? He says, you shall love your neighbour, you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbour as yourself. He then asks, who is my neighbour? We learnt last week that all men are our neighbours. Everyone is our neighbour. Every man, every woman, every boy and every girl. Does it matter what culture they belong to, what race they belong to, their social status, economic status? They are our neighbours. I want to quickly remind you that we are called to make a difference. We are called to make a difference. In Matthew chapter 4 verse 18 to 19, we're told that Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee and he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother. Casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus would show his disciples how to win men for the kingdom. 
All they needed to do was to follow him and to obey his instructions. After Jesus' death and resurrection on the cross, we're told in John 21, 22, Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father sent me, I also send you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said these things, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus, speaking to the apostles, my Father sent me, I am now sending you. We have a work to do. That work is to make a difference. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Amen. Jesus says you shall receive power. Amen. And that power is given by the Holy Spirit. We're not alone in the work. We have been called to make a difference. To be Christ's witnesses. Not just in our local city, but throughout the world. Reach your neighbour and reach the world. The scripture was read by Joshua this morning, John 4, 1-42, where we encounter the woman of Samaria, where she met with Jesus the Messiah. Here we see Jesus reaching out to those whom the Jews themselves would reject. Turn their backs on. Yes. Jesus had left Judea, we're told in verse 1 to 3, to go to Galilee. The Pharisees were watching him because they sought to destroy his ministry. They were afraid of him because he would stand up again, stand up to them. He would tell them, You are whitewashed tombs. In other words, you're hypocrites. You look clean on the outside, but inwardly there's something else going on. The Pharisees formed the largest and most influential religious political party in the New Testament times. They are consistently depicted in the Gospels as antagonistics. They opposed Jesus and the early Christians. The name Pharisee means separated one. The Pharisees truly separated themselves from society to study and teach the law, but they also separated themselves from the common people because they considered themselves religiously unclean. But we are compelled we are compelled to meet our neighbour, to reach our neighbour. John 4, 4, we read, Jesus says, where it says, but he needed to go through Samaria. There was a need for Jesus to go through. He needed to cross over into that boundary line that the Jews had drawn. Hallelujah. To go where no one else would go in order to reach the Samaritan woman. Verse 5 says, So he came to a city which is called Saigon near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. The meeting place. There's a place where we can meet our neighbour. For the woman of Samaria was at the well. 
Verse 6 says, Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A, a meeting place. Where do we meet our neighbours? Some would go and meet, let's say, the lions in Market Square of Nottingham. Sometimes it's outside Victoria Centre. But wherever our neighbour is, maybe is literally our neighbours, we meet them over the wall, over the fence, and we say good morning. That meeting place is special. That meeting place is special. Jesus arrived at the well of his great, 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 many times great grandfather, Jacob. And there we are told that Jacob had given the well to Joseph, his sons. And that well served many generations. Yes. It fed them. It quenched their thirst. Yes. It provided for their livestock. They were able to trade there as well. But that well didn't last forever. They would have to go back time and time again to draw from that well. In verse 7, we're told the woman of Samaria came to draw, and she said to Jesus, Give me to drink. Give me to drink. Sorry. Jesus said to the woman of Samaria, Give me to drink. Give me to drink. And the woman, seeing that Jesus had nothing to draw with, says, The well is deep. The well is deep. Jesus was able to engage in conversation with the woman. Simple request, give me to drink, opened up the conversation. That simple request, give me to drink, allowed Jesus to tell the woman of Samaria who he was. The woman says to Jesus in verse 9, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. As the conversation went on, they talked about the natural water compared to the living water. They spoke about the well, how it served Jacob's generations. They spoke about the woman's life experiences, how she had been married five times, but the person she was with now was not her husband. They spoke about where they should worship, whether on this mountain or that mountain. And Jesus says to the woman that God seeketh those who would worship him in spirit and in truth. The meeting place helped to build a relationship. Jesus knew who the woman was. Now the woman finally recognized Jesus as the Messiah. The one who was promised to come. The one who would come and bring salvation to the world. The woman says, I know that Messiah is coming in verse 25. Jesus says to her, I who speak to you and to you. By reaching out to our neighbours, we can reach the world. Networking. Each one bring one. The woman then left her water pot, verse 28, and she went to the city in verse 29 she says, Come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this not be the price? Then those in the city went out to meet Jesus 
for themselves. I want you to read John 4 again for yourselves. We're told in verse 40, many believed because of what the women did. But many more believed because they heard Jesus for themselves. Verse 41 says, And many more believed because of his own words. They believed because of his own words. The woman testified of meeting Christ. And they came out to listen yeah. to Jesus for themselves. Yeah. And they believed God's word. Yeah. Verse 42 says, Then they said to the woman, Now we believe not because of what you said, for we ourselves have heard it. Yeah. We know that indeed this is the Christ, Hallelujah. the Saviour of the world. Reach your neighbour and reach the world. Jesus spoke to the Samaritan woman. The woman went and told others what Jesus had revealed to her. They came and saw Jesus for themselves. They themselves believed. We have been called to make a difference, to reach our neighbour, who will in turn reach out to others. In this way, we are networking. We are able to reach the world when each one brings one. Let us pray for one another as we seek to go forward in reaching our neighbour so that as each one reaches one together we will reach the world. May God bless you.